Welcome to welcome to the uh, Facebook Live for Flying Miata. We're here with uh, I'm Mark Wingerter, by the way. Uh, I'm here with Brandon Fitch, and uh, we had a little debate about this earlier. What exactly do you do? Uh, <laughs> I am in charge of product development, so I design a lot of parts, I coordinate with manufacturers, find new stuff uh, to put on our shelves, that kind of thing. Perfect. So. We're gonna introduce you guys to Brandon's car. This has been around the fleet for a long, long time. So how long have you actually owned this car though? Before you were here. Oh yeah, enough, right? yeah, before I was here. Uh, that's a good question. I'm gonna say 15 something, no, no, it's probably not quite 20. We'll go with 18 years. I'm going with 18. Go with 18 <laughs> years, that's, that's good enough. Um, I heard there was a bit of an adventure buying this car and even how you got into this car in the first place. Yeah, so I ended up with this car because I totaled my first car. Mm -hmm. um, be careful of uh, wet roads and metal expansion joints on bridges <laughs> and or bad <laughs> shocks. So I or highly recommend our shock mounts. I'm not, <laughs> yes, it was, it was all of the above. I can, there are details with it, but whatever. Unfortunately, that car uh, <laughs> did not no survive more. that particular encounter, so. Um, so I looked for a new car, um, and basically I wanted an NA, um, and for whatever reason, people will argue with me, but I didn't want red. That was, those are basically my requirements, and, and it had to have a Torsen in it to start off with, so whatever. Nice. So I found this one on eBay, um, and it was really low miles for 96, because this was whatever my numbers made it out to be, 2001 or, or thereabouts. And that's, it had- That's 18 years ago. Yeah, I know, it's terrifying, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So it had about 30,000 miles on it. I was like, wow, that's really low mileage, but you know, it looks good and I'm going through the pictures and there's some detail-y things, you know, it doesn't have a, a hood emblem on it now or then, it does now, that's another story. And um, anyway, some detail-y things that kind of keep me into the fact that it had been in some kind of accident, but there was nothing on the Carfax, looked pretty clean, blah, blah, blah. Bought it, mostly awesome. But then I kind of dug into it a little bit and there's actually Bondo on the frame rails. Oh trying to make it look like it was all structural on the inside there. So, Yikes. yeah. So for that reason, wow. I've kind of thrown all of our chassis reinforcement everything at it. So it's got the shock tower <laughs> brace, it's got the butterfly, it's got the um, roll bar. Uh, and then I did also do the stitch welding. I didn't remove the engine. I wasn't quite that committed to it, but I did everything that I could access without completely disassembling the car. And nice. I figure now it's either at or slightly above a normal, completely unreinforced Miata, no, subjectively well, speaking. Bondo doesn't have that much structural no, integrity. No, it's, it's super seems. weird. You'd think that, you know, <laughs> filling in the holes would help, but uh, it turns out, no. <laughs> Not so much. No, it doesn't work. Um, so what modification-wise, other than the chassis reinforcement, what have you done to the car? So it, around here, this is a pretty normal car. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I guess it's kind of not. Pop the hood on it. Yeah. You can so it's got our FM2 on it, and actually, a lot of the parts on the car are from my original car because it was it was pretty crunched in the front, uh, but everything else was okay, except for one wheel. One wheel was very much not okay, but that's fine. <laughs> um, so it's got our FM2 on it. Um, that's the original turbo off of my first car. This thing has 130 something on it now. I honestly don't remember how many miles I put on the turbo on my last car, but I figure wow. 125, 150,000 on the turbo. Runs great. Um, these are, for the most part, this is a first generation flying Miata, like our in-house turbo, mm -hmm. uh, one of those. Um, so anyway, got that. I've got our very first big brake kit, which has caused me some wheel fitment issues. So I kind of want to change that. Yep. <laughs> um, I've got our cross flow radiator. Um, I used to have issues with overheating on this car. I did a whole bunch of ducting in the mouth. You know, it has air conditioning and <clears throat> all that. I did uh, high flow fans. I had just kind of a generic aluminum radiator. Um, I put the cross flow in and that for the most part has been the magic bullet. Um, I really want to do our stage three fans, but. Well, and for everybody that, that doesn't realize this, Brandon is the one that designed the stage three fan setup, right? Uh, well, yeah, the <laughs> spall might have had something to do well, with the fans the themselves, fans but, themselves yes, but yes, fitting it in place, um, yeah, I, I suppose that was me. Uh, it, <laughs> it's tight, but it fits and it works and they're awesome. Anyway, I talked about that before. So, uh, 
Let's see, it has our stage two suspension kit um, with NB parts in it because that's what happened to be laying around the shop. <laughs> They're also uh, the old KYB AGX shock, so I'm, oh, I'm wow. trying to decide if I want to change to Coney's or Fox's right uh, now. But. I ran those AGX's for a while. They're good. They're they're decent. They're all right. They're they're they either handle well. Very old school now though. <laughs> yes, they're they're old school. They either handle well and ride okay, or ride pretty well and handle okay. But yeah. getting the two of them together, that's kind of where it's might handle stuff okay. is much better. Yeah, <laughs> didn't ride very well. Yeah, and I've got this one set up vice versa, so it's yeah, it's all right. But anyway, um, how much horsepower, roughly? So this one, uh, I'm not entirely sure why, honestly, but it is unusually strong. So about 12 PSI, um, it makes 250 at the wheels uncorrected. Um, wow, up here around 5,000 feet. So, and it's bone stock. I've done timing belts and oil changes and, and that's it. I mean, internally, obviously. Right, right. You know, turbo kit and all that kind of stuff. And it does have our old uh, FM221 ECU on it as well. Oh, okay. So it's not running the hydro. Uh, no. Nice. Um, how often do you take this car to the track? I mean, you used to I used regular. to. Yeah, so basically, <clears throat> I kind of took it to the track more and more and more and more, and then I bought a track car, and I didn't take it to the track anymore, which, that's always a compromise, and it was my daily driver and my track car, which kind of got a little exhausting and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, uh, so nowadays, occasionally, not mm -hmm. very frequently, I've got different cars I take to the track, right. um, but this one is the daily driver, I drive it to work every day. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, we had a question on Instagram, didn't make it through on Facebook, about uh, what do you drive to work in the winter? I know you have driven this in the winter. Um, yeah, I mean this one. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, snow tires and well, around here in Colorado, that, that's the works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, this, it, it snows infrequently enough here that I have actual four season, all seasons, which are not winter tires. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to make that argument, but... <laughs> they are all seasons as opposed to three seasons. Don't send us the emails. Yes, exactly. We know there's a difference. Um, I do have a set of full-on winners. Uh -huh. uh, if it's that bad, and then we have a snow track local to us that definitely yes. needs the winter tires. That's that is a right. riot. Uh, but we usually take the wife's Miata to that. So, Sweet. Um, another question that uh, that came up. Uh, every car in here seems to have a name, but this one. Yeah. What's up with that? Not really a car name guy, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Have has anybody ever told you that your car resembles Spud McKenzie? You remember Spud? Oh wow. The, the, the dog? spokes dog for Bud Light with the black guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. White dog with the black guy. No. So that hasn't come up. That I, but I can I, see the similarity. That's that's weird for me because that's the first thing I think of. So we're gonna name this car today. <laughs> it's <All not> right. Spud. <laughs> Spud. <laughs> So what, what happens then, because I, I, the paint is a little rough in all sorts of different directions, so I'm probably going to wrap it and I'm probably going to change the color. So what happens when I change the color? You can't do that. No? I'm just not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> you could do pearlier white or maybe okay. arctic white. Oh. I think there's an alpine white BMW color that yeah. should be really good. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you can all change right. the color up. Just, yeah. In yeah. the white family. Just as long as it's still white. Got it. Okay. <laughs> uh, any Facebook questions? Not yet. Not yet? All right. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this walk around. If you do have any questions, send them our way. Um, we'll be answering the questions from the comments a little bit later. So thanks, Brandon, for bringing the car in. Yeah. He's it's here every day. He's doing the Dante thing on his day off today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was supposed to be here today. <laughs> All right.